Welcome to the Web of Why, where we weave the tapestry of holistic health and herbs. All right, looks like a few more people are joining us, which is wonderful. Welcome, welcome, everyone. And I'm just going to get started. So this is what I am coining the Web of Why. And it's a space where I hope um, with everyone to sort of weave that tapestry of health and herbs and discuss um, certain topics and things that may or may not be working for you and things that I'm noticing in clinic and patterns that I'm noticing in my own healing journey and those of um, other people that I work with. So that is my main goal with this. And today what I wanted to talk about is why your herbs might not be working. And it's so interesting because, you know, as a herbalist to say that your herbs don't work, you kind of get like a gasp. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean they don't work? And there are times when people are not getting the kind of results that they're hoping to get and there's a few reasons for that so I'm going to go through those with you guys and kind of paint a bit of a picture and hopefully empower you to know why you might not be getting maybe the best results that you had been hoping for. So the first is unrealistic expectations. And this is really important because most people when they come to me, the first thing they say is, can you give me a herb for dot, 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 high blood pressure, um, you know, to replace a medication, very common, right? And we kind of set up these expectations that plants actually function in the same way that medications do, and they don't. There are two methods of healing, but they actually have nothing to do with one another and they don't really work the same way. It's kind of like buying a bicycle to replace your car and then expecting the bike to function in the exact same way as your car. It's never gonna happen because while they're both modes of transportation, they each come with them their own sets of pros and cons that you have to work with. For example, you know, a, a car is gonna get you somewhere faster, absolutely, but a bicycle's cheaper. Um, you know, a bike's gonna give you more exercise and you're not gonna experience that with the vehicle. You're gonna have more maintenance with a car versus a bike. So why am I talking? I got more people on board here. Why am I talking about bikes and cars? And we're discussing the notion that perhaps we've set our herbs up with unrealistic expectations. And we've almost set them up to fail in essence because we're expecting them to work like a medication. And that's where the car and bike analogy come in. If you expect your bike to work the same way as your car, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. So that's the first reason why herbs may not work for you. It's if you're setting yourself up for failure or disappointment and the idea that you think that um, that is going to work the same way as a medication you're on. So number one, that's the first one. And this happens a lot with me. I have people who get really disappointed with outcomes because they, like I said, they're expecting them to work just like the medication that they were on. And that's just not how it works. Another area, another reason why you, you might experience less than desirable results from your herbs is because you've actually picked the wrong plant. And the thing that's really interesting too about herbal medicine is that we actually have a lot of different plants to choose from that work in similar ways. You know, let's again use hypertension as an example. There's more than one plant that can help with hypertension. But when we look at plants, we also have to look at the constitution and the energetics of that person. And that's something that's really important to keep in mind because not all plants and people fit together. They don't always work. There is a such thing as a better plant choice for a person. Some of this is gonna come from experience and just learning what herbs work and which ones don't with particular constitutions. I'm, if I have someone with hypertension who is hot and sweaty and um, is easily flushed, 
I'm likely going to avoid herbs that have that same constitution, that kind of hot, wet sort of a mechanism by which they work. That would not be a good fit. So even though that plant is a hypertensive plant, and for all intents and purposes, will help to lower blood pressure, it's likely not a good match for the human that I'm working with. And this is where this idea of synergy comes in and where we look at the energetic connection between the plant and the human that we're working with. Now, I mean, sometimes we do see that with medications. I mean, how many of you folks have been on meds before and you've had to try more than one? Right? Perhaps there is that synergistic component with medication as well, but as a plant worker, I can really only speak from the paradigm and lensing of a herbalist. So maybe you've got the wrong herb. Something else to think about too. Another area I want you to kind of wrap your mind around about why my herbs might not work is maybe you just have crappy quality plants. And that's really something that I want to drive home because on a market that is now flooded with botanicals, it is really easy to buy low quality herbal medicine, especially now in general, I'm speaking generally, things like tablets and capsules are usually pretty low quality. Um, there, you don't really know, tablets are really difficult for the body to digest and therefore to actually pull any medicine out of. And oftentimes the herbs that go into tablets and capsules were never good quality to begin with. Another area to think about too is even when you're buying things like tinctures, how fresh and vital was the herbal medicine that went into that end product? Did they use live, vibrant, fresh herb material, or did they use stale and dry herb material? So something to think about too, why are my herbs not working? It could be the quality that you're looking at. And I often caution people when they're buying herbs from maybe natural health food stores to really examine the color. They should be bright and vibrant. If the herbs don't have a really strong smell to them, they likely have gone stale. So again, our medicine um, or the outcome that we're hoping to achieve is only as good as the medicine <laughs> that, that we have, the quality of medicine that we're using. Another reason why your herbs might not be working is time. You didn't give it enough time. And that's something too that's very different from the pharmacological model that again, you have to kind of wrap your head around. Because in many, many cases, and I'll go back to hypertension again, you've got one, two doses of a hypertension medication and your blood pressure's down. And we've kind of set ourselves up for those sorts of expectations when it comes to herbs as well. And back to unrealistic expectations. I want you to remember that it took you time to walk to the disease state that you are in and it's going to take time to walk yourself back out again and to give yourself that space and that grace and allow the herbs to do their work. They are a deeper, slower medicine. We're comparing apples to oranges and that's back to my first point again. If what you're looking for is pharmacological results, you might want to go with a pharmacological product. If what you're looking for, what drew you to natural healing and to herbs in the first place are the very things that we sometimes have like a baseline comparison to with those meds and that's how they differ. And we have to embrace all the ways that they differ. Another reason why your herbs might not work is an interesting one. Um, oftentimes, people just starting out, they're not working in formulation. And personally, as a clinical herbalist and a practitioner, I have noticed that herbs tend to work better in teams, just like humans do. And when I create formulations for people and I combine herbs that have similar qualities, often the outcome is better than if I were to only use one herb, which is what we would call a simple. 
now it takes time to learn formulating and it's one of the things i'm most excited to teach with the community i'm creating over at weavers because it's an intimidating area combining herbs right but we often get that synergy remember that synergy i was talking about that connection between the human and the plant that synergy exists between plant and plant too and when we find the right combination of plants to work together, that's kind of when the magic happens, right? And that's when we get better results. Another reason why your herbs might not be working is because you're expecting them to do all the work. And that is kind of a real wake up call for a lot of people because herbs by definition are holistic and holistic health doesn't only mean ingesting plant material and hoping that everything else is just going to work itself out. We have to look at stress levels. We have to look at nutrition and diet. We have to look at movement and exercise and strength. We have to look at um, our mental and spiritual and emotional health in combination with the physical health. And a lot of times people, again, it's that kind of paradigm we have with allopathic medicine that I'm going to take this pill and this symptom's going to go away. We're, we're back to, it, you know, setting ourselves up for unrealistic expectations. And I'm going to go back to the car analogy one more time too, because yes, your gas is what makes your car go, right? But you still have to take it for oil changes. You still got to get the tires rotated. You're likely still going to have to fix components in your vehicle. There's more facets to owning a car than just simply putting gas in the tank and driving. Just like there's more facets to healing than simply ingesting a herb, you know, muttering a few prayers and hoping that it's going to solve all your problems for you. So we don't want the herbs to do all the heavy lifting for you. And one last reason why your herbs might not be working the way that you want them to is because we're using them for symptom suppression as opposed to healing. And again, we're using them, for lack of a better term, incorrectly. Herbs work best to help gently support the body back to a place of homeostasis balance and healing medications for the most part tend to suppress symptoms they're much more forceful shunting the body in particular directions for a particular outcome whereas when we use botanicals the goal is to support the system so it's kind of akin to using herbal laxatives because you can't go to the washroom and you're only treating the symptoms and you're not figuring out why you're constipated in the first place. And that's something that you really need to kind of be aware of when you're working with your botanicals. So I'm just gonna go over these one more time and then I'm gonna look to the comments to see if there's any questions. So the first, don't set herbs up for unrealistic expectations. Don't put them in a place of having to act like a pharmaceutical because that's not how they work and that's not what they do. Also look at whether you're using the right herb and whether that is the best match for you, your constitution, and what you need it for. Also look at the quality of the plants that you're using, it, right? Like if we have poor quality herbs, we should expect poor outcomes. Give yourself time to heal and give yourself time for the plants to do the work that they need to do in your body. They are a deep and slow medicine. That's exactly the way that they were designed to work. Some of them do have much more immediate reactions within the body, but they verge much closer to what we would call poisons in the sense that they have side effects. The stronger the plant is, the more side effects it's going to have. So in general, most of the botanicals I work with are slow and gentle medicines that are meant to support the body. Also look into working in formulation with your plants. You want your botanicals to work. You want your medicine to work. Allow that synergy to work, that relationship between plants to create a more well-rounded formula. Don't expect your plants to do all your work for you. This is a part of a holistic healing team. 
And so what else can you do to support your healing on this journey? And last but not least, if we use our herbs for the suppression of symptoms as opposed to figuring out the root cause, you're likely never gonna get the results that you're looking for. So that's my little ditty on why your herbs might not be working. Um, and I'm just gonna go pop on over to the comments, see if anybody has any. Ah, so have I heard about taking herbal medicine until you feel better? Um, I mean, that's again, that's a symptomological sort of approach to working with botanicals. If we only use them until we feel better, because then we're using our symptoms as a benchmark and a gauge to what's going on within the body instead of kind of having a broader approach. So I have heard people use that. And I think, again, we're maybe setting up our plants for unrealistic expectations and failure, perhaps. So that is my first Web of Why episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This, of course, will be available on the replay, and I will get it uploaded onto YouTube as well. For those who were able to make it live, thank you so much for spending uh, about 18 minutes of your day with me. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you next week for another engaging topic about health and herbs. Mm -hmm.